In this video, we'll learn how to use the timeline view in a team managed project. So let's head over to our project here. And on the left hand side, we will find the timeline. Before we click on this, though, I do want to point out on the board, we've already looked at these filters up here, but we also have those same filters on the timeline view. And they do the exact same thing, being able to filter by assignee or unassigned, or you can see we can filter by the status. And if you recall from our previous video, when we actually created our custom filter for the agile board, it shows up on the timeline as well. Now, in the last section, we learned about stories and epics. And epics are key to the timeline view because they are how really everything is organized on here. So let's create some epics to see how this will work. So I'm gonna create a new epic and this will be for, to make sure that we get the core podcast playback and controls done. And maybe one for the podcast discovery, if I can spell this screen and then for offline, just to have a couple of them in here go. And I'm just typing and then hitting enter. And then Jira will automatically create that issue and then jump down to the new one. So we can very quickly add these in. So now that we have the epics created, if you recall, epics are basically the parents of the issues underneath them. We learned about user stories, stories in particular, because that's another agile term. But any of the standard issue types that we have in Jira can be the children of epics. So to create a child issue, if we hover over, you'll notice the plus sign here, just to create that. And now we can just type in the summary. This is going to fill out the summary field of this story issue type. We can change the issue type if we want, but I'm good with story. Go ahead and type that out and then hit enter. And we can see Jira has created that story underneath the epic. So now that you've seen how these get added, I'm gonna pause the video for a moment while I finish building these out so we can see how they will look on the timeline with just a few more data points to look at. Okay, so now we have a few more epics and stories added. And these are really just issues, the same as if we had created them using the create button up here at the top like we've done in the past. Uh, the timeline view just gives us a really quick way of being able to create issues in the timeline itself. And once we have these added, the idea for the timeline view is to work kind of like a Gantt chart where we can plan out the order of things to get done. If we're working on sprints, we can add these epics into sprints. Uh, if not, they're just based on time. So if we hover over, you'll notice the time here, we can see the 14 days and we can just click and start to add in our timeline view. Maybe let's dial these up a little bit just so it's easier to see. And then over on the left and right side, as you can probably guess, you can expand or make smaller based on however long you want. And really all that Jira is doing on the back end, if we were to open up this issue here and scroll down, you can see really it's just adjusting the start date and the due date for this issue. So if we were to hover over, you can see that's 11, 10, 2024. If we want to change this specifically to something else, we can do that. And that will update on the timeline view as well. So now that we have some time added to these epics, we can actually add time to the children, the child issues, the stories as well. If we really want to get granular with how we plan out our timeline, you'll notice this is saying, oh, wait, actually, the parent needs to be longer than because the epic is supposed to be inclusive of all of the children, right? So we would want to extend that if we think that the child issues are going to run past either the end or the start. You'll see that as well. So you can start to see the power of just being able to see, view this in a timeline view. There are a couple other things I do wanna point out. So if we right click on this, we can just clear the dates very quickly. If you do get end up getting a lot of them going past or you just need to start over, that's just a quick way of being able to do that, clear both dates, right click. And on the epics, if you right click, not only can you remove the start and due dates, clear the dates, but you can also change the colors, again, to just visually help see some differences between them as you're starting to build out your timeline. 
Now, the last thing I want to point out when it comes to epics is this little visual indicator that we have here, right? So we can see it's very, it's really tough to see if you look closely, that little gray bar. So that's kind of an indicator of how much we have done. So if we open up one of these issues here and just change it to be done, you can see how that bar updates, right? Maybe let's do another one so we can see a little bit easier. So watch this bar here. See the green? That's the done. Four of five are left to do. So one is done. And now you can see the status bar in the epics is updating to reflect that some of these issues are done. It just gives another way of being able to visualize the work that's being done. And that's how the timeline view works in JIRA. Now, in our next video, we'll look at another way for us to visualize our work inside of team managed projects with the calendar view. See you there. In our last video, we added dates to issues in the timeline view. In this video, we'll look at another way to visualize that in the calendar view. Now, as we talked about before in the overview, as I'm recording this, the calendar is a new view. So obviously, if you're using an older version of Jira, you might not have access to it. But because we added dates in our last video, this is basically just showing us the start and due date fields, just like we saw in the timeline. So if we open up this epic here, we can see the start and due date. Actually, let's make this something a little bit closer so we can see the entirety of our epic here. Something like that. There we go. So now we can see the whole thing. And now, just like you would expect, and in the similar to the timeline view, we can drag from the ends to change those dates. However, we may want. We can also just take the whole thing and move it around. If we move it into the past, you can see it's going to say, oh no, it's overdue. Turn red and let us know. So the calendar view works a lot like any other calendar that you're already familiar with. But when it comes to JIRA, perhaps the most important thing to keep in mind about the calendar view is that the only issues we'll see in here are the ones that have dates associated with them. So if we were to open up this epic, we can see there's a lot of other stories underneath the epic that we created that are not showing up on the calendar. If we want them to show up on the calendar, we have to associate a date with them. So let's open up one of these and we have the due date field here. Let's add a due date and then go back to the calendar view and we'll see that show up in this view. Let's drag it over here so it has its own. It's just a little bit easier to visually see with the monitor resolution that I have. And then the same is true if we open this up and just remove the date, it'll disappear from the calendar view. But it's not actually being deleted, it's just disappearing from this view. Now, before we wrap up, I do also want to point out that we have some of the same filters that we've seen in the other views up here at the top. So we're not going to spend a lot of time going through them. But obviously, the filters here are more associated with a calendar, right? So we can search just like we've seen before. So if we wanted to filter by only things that say have the word podcast in them, we can filter. It's going to remove anything there. Uh, we can filter by the type. So issue type, if we only want to see the tasks, perhaps. Right, we can filter by those, as well as by status, assignee, or any other sort of indicator. There's a whole lot of other fields, basically, is what we're filtering by. Any of the fields, right? Really, really cool and powerful stuff that we can do here on the calendar view with the filters. So that is a look at the calendar view. It is a lot like what you would expect from any other sort of calendar, but it can be a great way to visualize and tweak the dates for our issues. Now, in our next video, we'll look at yet another way to visualize our issues in team managed projects with the list view. In this video, we'll get an overview of how the list view works in Jira's team managed projects. So the list view is exactly what we'd expect from a list of issues in JIRA. And now that we've looked at a lot of the other views, the way that this is organized should look familiar too. Up here at the top, we have the same search box and the ability to filter this list based on the assignees, just like we saw in the other views. And these are additive, just like we saw in the other views. And you'll notice the list itself looks a lot like Excel. And we can actually format this 
based on rules a lot like Excel also. So let's say we wanna see all of the unassigned issues in yellow, just to highlight them a little bit. There we go, so we create a rule, assignee is unassigned, will be a yellow row. And what happened to the formatting? Where is it? Well, that brings up a very good point with how lists work is that the formatting will not show up if the field is not visible. So up along the top here of our list, we have the field as columns, basically. And we were formatting based on the assignee. So we need to add in the assignee field. Now, once that's there, you can see our formatting is applied. We can also visualize this a little bit easier by going to assignee, right? So we can do that if we want. Just other ways of being able to visualize our data. Now, what's really cool about this is because all inside of Jira, we can customize this list and then share it with others on our team. So let's say we want to share all the stories that were created this week with somebody else. So I'm going to clear this out and let's filter all of the stories that were created from Sunday to Saturday. There we go. Have that applied. Now, when we share this with somebody else, there's a key thing to keep in mind. This formatting that we've done does not get shared. So let me show you what I mean. If I share this with Ethan and then log in, so this is logged in as Ethan here, you can see. That will show up in our notifications. Might take a second for it to show up. Refresh the page here. And we'll give it a second for this to show up. There we go. So we have the list that Valerie shared. And when we open this up, you'll notice we can see a sign E, but that formatting is not there. Same with the columns. If you look at the columns, right? So this goes all the way over to team, parent, but the columns that Valerie has are not the same. So that's one thing to keep in mind when you share the list. The list itself is the same. The issues on the list are the same because the same filters are being applied. We can see this filter here, story created. And then on Ethan's side, I'll pull this up a little bit easier to see. It's also filtering by the stories that were created. So it is the right list. It's the same list. It's just that some of the formatting doesn't come through. Hopefully Atlassian will fix that in the future, but that's something to keep in mind for now. Okay, so to recap, in this video, we learned how to filter the list view, customize the columns we see, and share our list with another user on the team. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.